we recall the existence uniqueness theorem for first order od initial value problem that we have learnt in your previous lecture so consider the first order od initial value problem y dash is equal to f of x comma y and with the initial condition y at x not is equal to y not so let r be a rectangle containing the point x not y not in the domain d f x comma y be continuous at all points x comma y in the rectangle described by modulus of x minus x not is less than a modulus of y minus y not is less than b and f x y is bounded in the rectangle r that is there exists some k such that modulus of f x y is less than or equal to k for all x y in the rectangle then we can say that the initial value problem y dash is equal to f of x comma y is with initial condition y is y of x not is equal to y not has at least one solution y x defined for all x in the interval x minus x not modulus of that less than alpha where this alpha can be determined by alpha is equal to minimum of a comma b by k where a comes from this rectangle and this b also comes from this dimension of the rectangle and this k is the bound for f so alpha is equal to minimum of a comma b by k so this condition ensures existence of a solution of the initial value problem for the first order ode in addition to the above condition if f satisfies the lipschitz condition with respect to the second variable y in r that is if modulus of f of x comma y1 minus f of x comma y2 is less than m times modulus of y1 minus y2 for all points x comma y1 and x comma y2 in the rectangle r then the solution yx that we have mentioned above defined for all x in the interval x minus x not modulus less than alpha with alpha defined above is unique this existence uh, condition was given by pino and the existence uniqueness was given by picard in fact the picard's existence uniqueness is based on this picard's iteration method proof so picard's iteration method you can recall from our previous lecture is again to solve the initial value problem for first order ode the initial value problem is y dash is equal to f of x comma y y of x not is equal to y not is the initial condition so we solved this initial value problem through a iteration in order to obtain those iterations we do the following what we do is we integrate this equation in the numbered as 1 on both the sides so we obtain integration of y dash from x not to x give us y x minus y not and then integration of the right hand side here integration from x not to x of f x y where we let x to be equal to t and so y is also a variable t so f t comma y t bracket close dt integration of this appears on the right hand side then what we rearrange this y x not on the right hand side we get y x is equal to y not plus integration from x not to x f of t comma y t dt since y of x not is equal to y not therefore we have written y not here so this gives us the iteration so here these two conditions are equivalent the equation 1 is equivalent to the equation 2 so any solution of equation 1 is also a solution of the equation 2 the iteration that we obtained is the following that first we replace this yt by y not and compute the right hand side so whatever value we will get in the right hand side that we will call as 
y1s that will be a function of x that i will call as y1x in the next step i will substitute y1x in the place of yt here so y1t in place of yt here and compute the right hand side here and whatever function we get that we call as y2x and this inductively to to get yn_x and the limit of those yn_x will give us a solution y under the existence uniqueness condition of the initial value problem so these are the iterations so as i said y1x is equal to y0 plus this integration then we get the y2x by here we have put y0 in place of the yt here and we got this y1x and then this y1x we have placed in the place of yt here to obtain this form and this gives us y2x and similarly we continue to get yn_x in this form by substituting in the place of y ytx y n minus 1x that you obtained in the previous step of the iteration so in this case we get the iteration y n x now under the assumption of the existence uniqueness condition we get that this iterations actually converge to the solution so the solution y x is equal to limit of intensity infinity y n x here is a question based on existence uniqueness theorem if p x comma q x are continuous functions in closure of interval i note that the closure of an interval i is a closed interval so if px comma qx are continuous function in closure of interval i prove that y dash x plus px yx is equal to qx where the initial condition is y of x not is equal to y not for x not belonging to an interval i this has a unique solution so in the existence uniqueness theorem of initial value problem for first order ode what we have is y dash x is equal to fxy and if fxy is continuous bounded on a domain and satisfies lipschitz condition then we conclude that the solution of the initial value problem exists and is unique now in this problem which is a special case namely it is a linear first order ode based initial value problem in this question given this kind of condition namely px and qx continuous function can we conclude that fxy is continuous bounded and satisfy lipschitz condition then from the initial value problems existence uniqueness theorem we can conclude that it has a unique solution you can pause the video and try to solve this problem so first we write this equation as y dash is equal to qx minus pxy by taking this p x y x on the other side so from this we understand that fxy is equal to qx minus pxy which is continuous and bounded on i because px and qx are given to be continuous on the closed interval i closure so this fxy is going to be continuous and bounded so one of the condition of the existence uniqueness theorem hold here next we check the lipschitz condition so we observe that for x belonging to i we have modulus of f of x comma y2 minus f of x comma y1 is equal to modulus of px times modulus of y2 minus y1 here since px is continuous on a closed interval px modulus is bounded let us say m greater than 0 is a bound for modulus of px so modulus of px times modulus of y2 minus y1 is less than equal to m times modulus of y2 minus y1 for that m 
Hence, we can now use the existence uniqueness theorem because all the conditions of the existence uniqueness theorem holds here. So, that theorem tells us that there exists a sub interval of i containing x0 on which this initial value problem has a unique solution. Now, let us recall the example that we had considered for Picard's iteration method in the previous lecture. So we had considered y dash is equal to x y and y naught is equal to 1, y0 is equal to 1 and we want to solve it using Picard's iteration method. So on integrating both the side what we get is y x is equal to y naught and y naught here is 1 plus integration x naught to x of t y t t t. This t comes in place of x and y t comes in, terms in place of y. So this is the integral equation. After integrating, we get this. And we put the initial conditions also. This gives us the Picard's iterations. So what do you do to get the iteration? First, we put in place of y t y naught. So y naught here is 1. So we write 1 y 1 x is equal to 1 plus integration 0 to x. 0 is the x naught t times 1, 1 is the y naught or value of y at 0. So t into 1 dt. So you have you know that this is 1 plus x square by 2. Then we compute y2 and that came out to be 1 plus x square by 2 plus x to 4 divided by 2, 2 into 4 in the denominator. So here what we have done is in place of yt we have substituted the y1t obtained from here and in this way we obtained the ynx to be equal to 1 plus x square by 2 plus 1 by 2 factorial x square by 2 whole square plus so on to 1 by n factorial times n power of x square by 2. So if you see that this series actually converges and it converges to e raised to x square by 2 because if you recall the power series expansion of exponential then it is 1 plus x plus x square by 2 factorial plus x cube by 3 factorial and so on. So from this we recognize that the solution yx is equal to e raised to x square by 2.